Well, good evening. I pray all is well with you. I know uh, a lot of people have got damage at their houses uh, from electrical issues and uh, tree damage and ice damage and what have you. And I pray that you are well and being taken care of this evening. I know at my own house, I've got plenty of tree damage there and I don't have any trees in my backyard, but my neighbor's trees broke over into my backyard. And then I have one big oak in the front yard, which isn't so big anymore. Somebody's looking for some way to make some extra money and has a pickup, I'd be willing to pay for somebody to come clean out some branches for me. Uh, I've got them in piles, so it uh, wouldn't be too hard. But anyway, uh, we are. I pray that you are safe and uh, well. Uh, I understand that uh, there's internet outages throughout the city and the, the state as well, so uh, you may be viewing this after Wednesday night, but that's fine. I pray that you still find it uh, enriching and fulfilling and it's God's word that would continue to walk with you, that he would continue to walk with you. This day we celebrate another feast day. This is the feast day of St. Simon and St. Jude, apostles of Jesus Christ. So we'll hear about them as we go into worship. But before we enter into worship, just some people we need to continue to keep in our prayers. We continue to lift up Ralph Kroll as he continues his healing process for his shoulder surgery. Uh, we continue to keep up, keep Beverly Allen in our prayers as she continues the healing process on her knee. We lift up Kathy Brightencamp as she prepares for surgery next week. We continue to keep in our prayers Donna Powell and her sister Sharon Postier, who is uh, this day going into surgery for uh, injuries uh, received during their car accident last week. We continue to keep the Kramer family in our prayers as uh, she will be laid to rest on Friday as God has called her home. With all this going on, let's bow our heads and have a word of prayer before we start this day. Lord God Almighty, we thank you for all of the gifts that you grant to us, especially that of Jesus Christ our Lord. And in him, even the, in the midst of all the turmoil and the chaos and the wrongs that are in this world, Lord, we still rejoice that he is our Savior, and that through him we have our salvation and our forgiveness of sins. And more importantly, Lord, that we are now adopted children of you. We are your children, sons and daughters, and we will, when this earthly pilgrimage is over, receive our, our inheritance, eternal peace, as we come to live with you face to face. Lord, we thank you for all the apostles, for all those who continue to spread your word and continue to tell us in the world about your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Guide us and keep us this day, O oh Lord. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. So, our order of worship, as usual on Wednesdays, is the Order of Vespers. It's found on page 229 in your hymnals, or you could have downloaded it from the internet if you had the internet going. So let's begin with our uh, Order of ver with Vespers and our common versicles. O oh Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ. Alleluia. And together we read Psalm 43 responsively. Hope in God, for I shall again praise him my salvation and my God. Vindicate me, O God, and defend my cause against an ungodly people. From the deceitful and unjust man deliver me. For you are the God in whom I take refuge. Why have you rejected me? Why do I go about mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? Send out your light and your truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. Then I will go to the altar of God. To God my exceeding joy, and I will praise you with the lyre, O God my God. Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my salvation and my God. Our Old Testament reading for this evening is from the book of Jeremiah, the 26th chapter. In the beginning of the reign of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, this word came from the Lord. Thus says the Lord, 
Stand in the court of the Lord's house and speak to all the cities of Judah that come to worship in the house of the Lord, all the words that I command you to speak to them. Do not hold back a word. It may be they will listen and every one turn from his evil way, that I may relent of the disaster that I intend to do. Because, that I tend, intend to do to them because of their evil deeds. You shall say to them, Thus says the Lord, If you will not listen to me, to walk in my way that I have set before you, and to listen to the words of my servants, the prophets, whom I send to you urgently, though you have not listened, then I will make this house like Shiloh, and I will make this city a curse for all the nations of the earth. The priests and the prophets and all the people heard Jeremiah speaking these words in the house of the Lord. And when Jeremiah had finished speaking all that the Lord had commanded him to speak to all the people, then the priests and the prophets and all the people laid hold of him, saying, You shall die. Why have you prophesied in the name of the Lord, saying, This house shall be like Shiloh, and this city shall be desolate without inhabitant? And all the people gathered around Jeremiah in the house of the Lord. When the officials of Judah heard these things, they came up from the king's house to the house of the Lord and took their seat in the entry of the new gate of the house of the Lord. Then the priest and the prophet said to the officials and to all the people, This man deserves the sentence of death because he has prophesied against this city, as you have heard with your own ears. Then Jeremiah spoke to all the officials and all the people, saying, The Lord sent me to prophesy against this house and this city all the words you have heard. Now therefore mend your ways and your deeds and obey the voice of the Lord your God, and the Lord will relent of the disaster that he has pronounced against you. But as for me, behold, I am in your hands. Do with me as seems good and right to you. Only know for certain that if you put me to death, you will bring innocent blood upon yourselves and upon this city and its inhabitants. For in truth the Lord sent me to you to speak all these words in your ears. Then the officials and all the people said to the priests and the prophets, This man does not deserve the sentence of death, for he has spoken to us in the name of the Lord our God. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. Our epistle reading this evening is from 1 Peter, the first chapter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are being guarded through faith, for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials, so that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that perishes through, through, though it is tested by fire, and may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you do not now see him, you believe in him, and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory, obtaining the outcome of your faith the salvation of your souls. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. And now our gospel reading for this day from John, the 15th chapter, beginning with the 12th verse. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one, has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what his master is doing, but I have called you friends, for all that I have heard from my Father I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you, that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should abide, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. These things I command you, so that you will love one another. If the world hates you, know that it has hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love you as its own. But because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. 
If they kept my word, they will also keep yours. But all these things they will do to you on account of my name, because they do not know him who sent me. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. And now we read the responsory together for the feast day of St. Simon and St. Jude, apostles of Jesus Christ. How beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news, who publish peace and bring good news of salvation. Their voice has gone out to all the earth, and their words to the ends of the world. That brings us to our lesson for today. Our lesson on this feast day of St. Simon and St. Jude, Apostles of Jesus Christ. <coughs> Excuse me. In the list of the twelve apostles, the tenth and eleventh places are occupied by Simon the Zealot and by Jude, who was apparently known also as Thaddeus. According to early Christian tradition, Simon and Jude journeyed together as missionaries to Persia where they were martyred. It is likely for this reason, at least in part, that these two apostles are commemorated on the same day. Simon is not mentioned in the New Testament apart from the list of the twelve, twelve apostles, and thus he is remembered and honored for the sake of his office, and thereby stands before us in eternity as in his life and ministry on earth, in the name instead of Jesus Christ our Lord. We give thanks to God for calling and sending Simon, along with Jude and all of the apostles, to preach and teach the Holy Gospel, to proclaim repentance and forgiveness, and to baptize in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Jude appears in John's Gospel, chapter 14, the 22nd verse, on the night of our Lord's betrayal and the beginning of his Passion, asking Jesus how it is that he will manifest himself to the disciples but not to the world. The answer that Jesus gives to this question is a pertinent emphasis for this festival day. If anyone loves me, he will keep my word and my Father will love him and we will come to him and make our home with him. Surely both Jude and Simon exemplified in life and death their love for Jesus and their faith in his word. Not only are we thus strengthened in our Christian faith and life by their example, but above all we are encouraged by the faithfulness of the Lord in keeping his promise to them to bring them home to himself in heaven. And there they live with him forever, where we shall someday join them. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Our text for this evening is from David's 43rd Psalm. Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my salvation and my God. This was the message of the apostles to hope in God. He who sent to the world the light of the world, who came in truth and was in fact truth personified, sent to deliver his people, as the psalmist writes, to be led to his holy hill. This was the role of St. Simon and Jude, two of Jesus' apostles. So what exactly is an apostle? The title was reserved for those who walked with Jesus in his time on earth, who had direct contact with the incarnate God. Even Jesus is referred to as an apostle in the book of, he of Hebrews, where it's written, Holy brothers, you who share in a heavenly calling, consider Jesus the apostle and high priest of our confession. Jesus had been sent just like the apostles were sent, sent by his Father. They were sent to convey a message, sent to serve as ambassadors of peace in the name of Jesus Christ, for the message they brought to those who would hear was of the gospel of Jesus Christ, a message of love and mercy and grace and forgiveness. These were the first evangelists of the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ they sought and found God Almighty, the Heavenly Father. The psalmist in today's text seeks the Father, just as we do as well. The psalmist describes faith as desire. As faith has been kindled within by the Holy Spirit, thus do they seek and desire God. The psalmist thirsts for him. He asks when he can come to him, 
And even in the lowest of times, hope remains. <clears throat> we are in such a low time in our pilgrimage. I don't need to detail all that is wrong in this world. As a result, mental health, spiritual health of so many is suffering. I know my own counseling sessions with others has taken on a different emphasis. Incidents of depression are increasing. Incidents of PTSD are increasing. Loneliness is, is increasing. Hopelessness is increasing. And hence the need for evangelists to openly be espousing Jesus Christ. For he alone is able to place true assured hope in the heart. How bowed down you are, my soul. And how you groan within me, writes the psalmist. Hope in God, for yet I will praise him for his saving presence. The psalmist speaks as a bride longing for her groom. The psalmist also knows that the distance between our God and us can only be bridged by Christ Jesus. In the days of David, one could go to the Jerusalem to be closer to God, there where the ark was kept. The psalmist in Psalm 42 yearned to go to the sanctuary to appear before God. To be in the earthly sanctuary was to stand in the gates of heaven. For us, that place close to God is found in Jesus Christ, found in the sacraments of holy baptism, found in the sacrament of the Lord's Supper, found in the written word. Jesus bridged the gap that existed between us and the Father. In Jesus, the divine and the human meet. He is the temple. He is the groom, the church. You and I are the bride. The Old Testament temple was a temporary dwelling for God. Jesus is the eternal temple. Though he was crucified, died, was resurrected, and ascended unto the Father, he stands as our temple. We cannot go to him as the apostles did, though. For he is not here with us in flesh, yet he is here as he is the second person of the Trinity, the second person of the God, the three persons, one God. And so we sing this song. On Christ's ascension I now build the hope of my ascension. This hope alone has always stilled all doubt and apprehension. For where the head is, there is well. I know his members are to dwell when Christ will come and call them. In this hymn, the absence of Jesus and the journey to him are conceived. There is a place for us to go where we will be with him. The journey is partly fulfilled at our death, and we continue to await the promised completion of the journey when Jesus returns in his glorified body. Our desire to be with God is fully met when we rise from the dead and see the new heavens and the new earth. And we hear a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them and they will be his people. And as St. Paul writes, Then we, as with the apostles, will be with him face to face. Until that time, though, we remain hopeful in his presence as said earlier in baptism, in the Lord's Supper, and in our gathering around his word and worship, for we truly believe he is present in, with, and under the elements of the sacraments. Thus in the sacraments does heaven come down to heaven, does to earth, to gift us assured hope. Therefore when we seek, we shall find him as in the words of St. Paul recorded by Luke. The God who made the world and everything in it, being Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in temples made by man. And he made from one man every nation of mankind to live on all the face of the earth, that they should seek God and perhaps feel their way toward him and find him. Yet he is actually not far from each one of us. God is everywhere. All are to seek him. And he is not far from us, standing with outstretched arms, ready to envelop us in his love. He who sent us the light of the world will send him again. He alone is our salvation. And thus we pray the following. Lord Jesus Christ, be present now. Our hearts in true devotion bow. Your spirit send with light divine. 
and let your truth within us shine. Unseal our lips to sing your praise in endless hymns through all our days. Increase our faith and light our minds and set us free from doubt that blinds. Come, Lord, my head doth burn. My heart is sick while thou dost ever stay. Thy long deferrings wound me to the quick. My spirit gaspeth night and day. O show thyself to me, or take me up to thee. Amen. Together now we read our canticle for the day, O Christ who called the twelve. O Christ who called the twelve to rise and follow you, forsaking old familiar ways for ventures bold and new. Grant us to hear your call, to risk security, and bound in heart and will to you, find perfect liberty. O Christ who taught the twelve, the truth for ages sealed, whose words and works awakened faith, the ways of God revealed. Instruct us now, we pray, by your empowering word. True teacher be for all who seek, their light, their life, their Lord. O Christ who led the twelve, among the desolate, and broke as bread of life for all, your love compassionate. Lead us along the ways where hope has nearly died, and help us climb the lonely hills where love is crucified. O Christ who sent the twelve on roads they'd never trod, to serve, to suffer, teach, proclaim the nearer reign of God. Send us on ways where faith transcends timidity, where love informs and hope sustains, both life and ministry. O Christ, the Apostle's Lord, the martyr's strength and song, the crucified and risen King to whom the saints belong. Though generations pass, our tribute still we bring, our hymns a sacrifice of praise, our lives an offering. And let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Taught by our Savior, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come to you. Almighty and gracious Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep us steadfast in your grace and truth. Protect and deliver us in times of temptation. Defend us against all enemies and grant to your church your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, you chose your servants Simon and Jude to be numbered among the glorious company of the apostles. As they were faithful and zealous in their mission, so may we with ardent devotion Make known the love and mercy of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels and all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.
I pray you are safe at home, that your electricity is on, and hopefully your internet as well. May God continue to keep you. I look forward to seeing you Sunday. Don't forget about our study tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Amen.